computer. Okay, Aloki, go ahead. Yes. Om Vakratunda Mahakarya Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurame Deva Sarvakaryesha Sarvada Angi Kambuva Namyasya Vachi Kam Sarva Vangmayam Aharyam Chandra Taradi Tamnumaha Satvi Kam Shivam Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwara, Guru Saksha Parabrahma, Tasmay Shri Guru Venamaha, Saraswati Namastupyam Varade Kamarupini, Vidyarambham Karishyami Siddhet Bhavatumi Sada, Om Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Upunattu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai, Tejasvi Navahi Tamastu Mavit Vishavahi Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Shri Guru Namaha Hari Om Very good, very nice. So today we are starting some new uh, way of the class. One of you will introduce the class the speakers and in the end concluding. So today we have Al uh, Aditi Divakar. She has, uh, she's going to introduce the class. So I'll hand over to Aditi. Go ahead, Aditi. Hario, next slide. Sadha Shiva Samaramba Shankara Charya Madhyama Asmada Charya Paryantam Vande Guru Parampara. Oh. Profound salutations to all the Gurus, starting from Sri Krishna to all the Gurus, including Swamiji, Dimapa sir, and Sach uh, Dr. Sachin. Today we are celebrating the most auspicious day, Krishna Janmashtami. Krishna is perhaps the most loved and worshipped God in Sanatana Dharma. Krishna is an ideal God because of what he did to his parents, community and to all of us. Uh, we all have three runas. Pitra runa, our debt, toward, debt towards our parents. Loka runa, our debt towards the community which we live in. And uh, Acharya runa our duty towards the Guru. While we cannot pay back these runas completely, at least we can conduct our lives in such a way that our parents, uh, society and Gurus are proud of us. Krishna has fulfilled all his runas as told in this beautiful verse. The verse goes, Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanura Madhanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishna was the famous, fa uh, sorry, favorite son of Vasudeva and Devaki. He killed Kamsa, Chanura and many other demons and protected the society from the evil forces. The best way to pay respect to our gurus is by following and passing the teaching. Krishna's big, biggest contribution is that he became a Gita Charya. He taught uh, Bhagavad Gita, which, uh, which is the mo uh, best teaching for all of us on how to lead our lives and attain moksha. That is why Krishna is known as Jagat Guru. Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru. Today we will learn more about this by Dr. Ambika. We will also learn how to chant uh, the uh, verses of 9th chapter properly by Rama Ma'am and uh, learn a little bit more about 9th um, chapter and few stories. Uh, before that, I will chant 18th um, chapter verse 41 to 50. Brahario Brahma Nakshatriya Vishan Shudranam Chaparantapa Karmani Pravi Bhaktani Swabhava Prabha Virgune Shamodamastapa Shaucham 
ಶಾಂತಿರಾರ್ಜವಮೇವ ಜ್ಞಾನ ವಿಜ್ಞಾನಮಸ್ತಿಖ್ಯಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಕರ್ಮ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ಜ ಶೌರ್ಯ ತೇಜೋಧೃತಿರ್ದಾಕ್ಷ್ಯಂ ಯುದ್ಧೆ ಚಾಪ್ಯ ಪಲಾಯನ ದಾನ ಈಶ್ವರ ಭಾವ ಕ್ಷಾತ್ರ ಕರ್ಮ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ಕೃಷಿ ಗೌರಶ್ಯ ವಾಣಿಜ್ಯ ವೈಶ್ಯಕರ್ಮ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ಪರಿಚರ್ಯಾತ್ಮಕ ಕರ್ಮ ಶೂದ್ರ ಸ್ವಭಾವ ಸ್ವೇ ಸ್ವೇ ಕರ್ಮಣ್ಯಭಿರತ ಸಂಸಿ ಲಭತೆ ನರ ಸ್ವಕರ್ಮ ನಿರತ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಯಥಾವಿಂದತಿ ತೃಣು ಯತ ಪ್ರವೃತ್ತಿರ್ಭೂತ ಸ್ವಕರ್ಮ ಸ್ವಕರ್ಮಣಾತ ಅಭ್ಯರ್ಚ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ವಿಂದತಿ ಮಾನವ ಶ್ರೇಯಾಧರ್ಮೋ ವಿಗುಣ ಪರಧರ್ಮಾತ್ಸ್ವನುಷ್ಕಿತ ಸ್ವಭಾವನ್ಯತ ಕರ್ಮ ಕುರ್ವನ್ನಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ಕಿಲ್ಬಿಷ ಸಹಜ ಕರ್ಮ ಕೌಂತೇಯ ಸದೋಷ ಅಪಿ ನತ್ಯಜೇರ್ವಾರಂಭಿ ದೋಷೇನ ಧೂಮೇನಾವೃತ್ತ ಅಸಕ್ತ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ಸರ್ವತ್ರ ಜಿತಾತ್ಮ ವಿಗತ ಸ್ಪೃಹ ನೈಷ್ಕರ್ಮ್ಯ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಪರಮ ಸನ್ಯಾಸೇನಾಧಿಗತಿ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಪ್ರಾಪ್ತೋ ಯಥಾ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಾಪ್ನೋತಿ ನಿಬೋಧ ಮೇನ್ ಸಮಸೇನ ವ್ಯಕೌಂತೇಯ ನಿಷ್ಠಾಜ್ಞಾನ ಹರಿ ಓಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುಭ್ಯೋ ನಮಃ ಹರಿ ಎಕ್ಸಲೆಂಟ್ ಅಲೋಕ್ ಅದಿತಿ ವೆರಿ ನೈಸ್ಲಿ ಯು ಹವ್ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸ್ ದ ಕ್ಲಾಸ್ ಆಸ್ ವೆಲ್ ಆಸ್ ಯು ಹವ್ ಚಾಂಟೆಡ್ ಯುವರ್ ವರ್ಸಸ್ ಥ್ಯಾಂಕ್ ಯು ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಐ ವಿಲ್ ಡೂ ಮೈ ಪ್ರಣಾಮಸ್ ಟು ಅವರ್ ಗುರುಸ್ ಗುರುರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಗುರುರ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ಗುರುರ್ ದೇವೋ ಮಹೇಶ್ವರ ಗುರು ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಪರಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರುವೇ ನಮಃ so with guru's blessings we start the class and today dr ambika she will explain us the significance of krishna janmashtami over to you ambika hari om shri guru bhyo namaha my slides little louder please my slides yeah here now we can only see the first slide we can't see the rest of this one can you see i yeah. i have already so, no no i want to see the slides oh wait a minute then i will again so we can see the first slide okay okay oh i thought uh, okay Oh, so till now you were not able to see the slides. Now? No, Uncle. Yes, sir. No. Can... no sir. Let me see. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. So, as Aditi has explained, all of us know that tomorrow is the Krishna Janmashtami, which is also known and she has also told the story of Krishna Janmashtami. So, we also know that this Krishna Janmashtami is also known as another name of krishna janmashtami gokulashtami and or janmashtami which is popularly known as janmashtami next slide so when it falls or when it comes see uh, we all know that it is on 18th or 19th of 
August it is coming. But that is according to the Gregorian calendar. So if you want to see it according to our Panchangam or Vikram Sambhar, when it comes, it comes on the eighth day of Krishna Paksh of Bhadrapada month according to the Vikram Sambhar calendar. Usually the calendar which we are familiar with, this is January, February, March, April and all that. In that calendar, if you want to see, it comes somewhere between August and September. We all know that the Lord Krishna is also incarnation of Lord Vishnu and special events are held in Vrindavan and Mathura. Can anyone tell me why Vrindavan and Mathura, uh, the special events are happening? Or because how it is related to Shri Krishna? Because Shri Krishna was, uh, used to live in uh, Vrindavan when he was small. Yeah, yeah. So childhood there. Vrindavan was where he used to live. Mathura, otherwise, why would they celebrate it uh, greatly in their city? Yeah, pardon. In Mathura, Vrindavan, Mathura, all these places, he has spent his childhood. Okay, next slide. So this is all we all know. But then, apart from celebrating the way we are celebrating the Janmashtami, what is the biggest gift of Sri Krishna to the mankind or to anyone is that he has given the Bhagavad Gita. And, you, and we all have been learning Bhagavad Gita from past two years. So there is certain uh, teachings that we have to incorporate in our life in order to pay respect or to celebrate the Janmashtami. Apart from the usual celebration which we do. So if we follow the teachings, then also we are celebrating every day. So what are the teachings that are we have learned so far? develop the right perspective. So when we say a right perspective, it is like you have been given a situation and in that situation, every situation which you come across, you always have to think whether I should do it, if I at all I am doing it, how I have to do it and why I should do it. For example, a very simple situation, you are having an exam and somebody is asking you to come for a play. So, what will be the right perspective in that situation? You have to think, no, tomorrow is my exam. Now, whether I should study or I should play. If I am going to play, what will happen? If I am going to study, what will happen? So, right, you have to develop this attitude towards every situation in your life. Whether you should do it, if you should do it, why you should do it. Okay. You have to have a right perspective then you have to be very positive in your thinking. Again, coming back to the same example, playing or not playing. See, if your attitude is positive, then only you can think, no, tomorrow is my exam, so I have to study. So every situation which you face in your life, you have to have a positive thinking. And when you have a positive thinking, then only you can take a correct decision. Another example also, can and when you are, yes, okay. Now, when you are positive, then only you have a calm mind. So, what do I mean by a calm mind? All of you have seen, suppose you take a water in a tumbler and add some milk or some, some the, uh, impurity into it, then you can't see what is in the bini. So, only when your mind is calm, you can see or introspect the particular situation. A calm mind only can help you to take a proper decision. And when you have a developed the right perspective, you have a positive thinking, you stay calm, then only you can think big. So in your age, what is your think, thinking big is? Okay, I have to do good in studies. I have to do good in the curricular activities. I have to excel in whatever I do. And when you do all these things, then only you will be following your Swadharma. So what is a Swadharma of a student? A student has to excel in all the things which he do. He has to put his heart and soul in acquiring the maximum number of or maximum knowledge 
what he can get so what these things are the things which we have learned from the gita and being a student we have to develop this slowly 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 because when we develop these things then only we will be a good human being and a good nas national okay hari om thank you thank you ambika so children um through celebration of krishna janmashtami we want to take some few pointers and that's what ambika tried to tell you all it's very simple when there is some task given to you and if you are not focused what will happen if for example she said tomorrow is exam and we are not focused what will happen tell me some someone can tell me vishnu sir can i see yeah go ahead whoever wants to kavin you want to say sir we lose marks and we'll we fail the exam and we'll not do good in the exam then then what will happen you will not be calm also while playing you will be thinking i have not studied for some time you will play but then afterwards when you come home will you be calm or you will will you be agitated or will you be angry on yourself or something what will happen i will regret that we didn't study correct and then definitely in the exam when you go where the paper is given to you you might know the answer but sometimes you will not get because your mind is not calm like the water is not completely clear you can't see beneath so lot of thoughts will come in the mind during the exam and you will not able to write 100% so what will be the marks yeah, only if we study That's not about the very marks there actually that is it sir if you stay calm and study uh, pe- with a peaceful mind before the exam then even if a very t- even if, even if t- come question comes twisted we'll answer it very good and what was sharav saying to us uh is yes, actually um, in the exam it's not about the marks because you if you have studied the day before or just before going to school okay you know the answers but it's not about the marks there hmm correct. you're you're not going to understand it correct so that so you so sir, you will we'll know what to do in the next exam yeah and sir when we will get our marks we'll be really sad with our marks then we'll continuously regret the whole day that why didn't they study i should have just not gone to play and study that day correct so sir, yeah go ahead even so if we, um, you know the answer you will get confused is it correct or is it wrong you will think over it or over it only correct just like arjuna he knew what to do in the battlefield but he was overthinking on it he was confused he was confused about his swadharma and that's where bhagwan has given this geeta in all 18 chapters Arjuna ask almost 17 questions again and again and finally he gets the answers and he surrenders to uh, bhagwan and then he fights for you don't have to go and fight anywhere but your swadharma is to learn understand very well and reproduce wherever it is required like in the exams or when there is a competition you have to understand first to reproduce it right so this is the lesson from bhagavad gita and that's what we'll follow okay let us come to the ninth chapter <clears throat> last time i did a mistake the mistake was i wrote sadyo mukti as krama mukti the the whole chapter is to understand we have to take the jump and the jump is sadyo mukti i by mistake i had told krama mukti krama mukti is you grow old and you die before dying if you pray bhagwan you will get krama mukti means you might land up in swarga or you might land up again in one more janma but sadyo mukti is as sharo very clearly said last time it is now it is while living it is also called jeevan mukti and this chapter is talking all about it the first three verses is introduction which we did last time the introduction was to come away from this birth and life cycle we saw the big wheel you don't have the beginning of the end so the cycle if you have to come you have to jump out of this 
sorry go round or samsara the first verse was about the great teacher lord vishnu himself teaching the student arjuna and why arjuna because arjuna was a patient listener he was listening the after the first chapter and beginning of second chapter eighth verse arjuna started to listen and very patiently was listening so that's why out of all the pandavas he was given the um, bhagavad gita teaching then in the second verse like a magician a great magician krishna says lot of things great about gita it is the knowledge of kings it is the greatest knowledge of all the knowledges and this knowledge purifies your mind and everything around you and it can be experienced now in this life not to come next life and it is a comfortable knowledge to attain this all big big words he uses to make like a magician before starting his act he will show so many hands light will come and go he will wear so many clothes same way krishna is explaining about the secret guija tamam shastram that is bhagavad gita and divyanshi in her third verse she explained this very well that those who don't understand this are all fools they were doomed to go down in the lower lokas or hell sir like when if some person is hanging on the tree when the tree is going to be broken and the tree is more pushed by life and down there is a lake of snakes and top the rats are biting he still he wants to get the honey that is greed that is greed correct and that is foolishness that is sir, complete foolishness sir because you don't know yeah there are several bees stinging you snakes in a pool ah, and an elephant trying to pull you out what do you do you cry for you cry to lord for help and lord is giving the hand lord there. Is give, sir lord is giving the hand to uh, uh, take to heaven but still the person wants to go to hell like that exactly so all of you i am very sure uh, so it's uh-huh. basically god will show you the way but, but if you get stuck with maya there then it's your fault so that's what children you are already understanding so many things and i don't think so any one of you will hang like this none of you that is guaranteed by krishna's secret that is the secret that once you understand what is maya what is real life you will never hang like this and even though by mistake you hang you will definitely take the hand of lord rather than the honey so this is the understanding by the first three verses we would like to take this uh, we are doing the series of avataras of vishnu so sharav today is going to explain us varaha avatar over to you sharav yes sir varaha avatar so next slide yes So I believe this is slide before this. Before this. Oh. This this is the same way you have given me. Uh, have I missed a slide? I don't think so. so um, like it okay. starts with the doorkeepers. Just a moment. Wait a minute. I'll go to your. So was that slide deleted? Maybe I don't know when I was transferring. Maybe see this is how you have given. Can you see this? Uh, so you're not sharing. Okay, wait a minute. I'm sharing it now. Uh, so it's okay if uh, you want. I can take another device and read from that. No, 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 no. Just go ahead. This is your slides. Uh, okay, so. So this is the next slide, Sharo. This is how it is. uh one minute um it's loading okay. can you see no so one minute it's uh, loading i just have to all others can see the slide children no sir no sir, no, sir. we can't see oh. Oh. loading sir no sir no sir oh okay 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 still loading why it is loading i'll go to 
share. Can you see now? Ah, yes, sir. We can see now. Now? I think, uh, wait. Sir, go. I think uh, the third slide might be the first yes. one. Uh, no, it's um, okay. So I'll take a different. Okay, so you can. I am hmm? very sure you are so good. You can just tell what you know about Vara Avatara rather than reading. Uh, yes, sir. You are I so can, good. You, uh, just, you just go ahead. I can summarize it. Summarize yeah. it. No problem. So the story of Varaha Avatara starts with the doorkeepers of Lord Vishnu. They loved Lord Vishnu and they were honored that they were the gatekeepers. So they gatekeepers and they were working for him. So then uh, many people came to visit Lord Vishnu and they allowed every person who had grievance to see the Lord because uh, they knew that Lord Vishnu's time was precious and it could not be wasted. So one day Brahma and his sons had come to visit Vishnu, but Vishnu was resting at that time. So they stopped them from entering the gate. Brahma's sons got angry and uh, he cursed both of the doorkeepers, Jaya and Vijaya. Their names were Jaya and Vijaya. So they cursed them that they would be born as humans on, on earth. So then they pleaded, but Brahma's son could not, take, could not do anything. So then um, Vishnu came hearing all this. He apologized for his uh, gatekeepers, but uh, the curse could not be taken taken back. Only Vishnu himself uh, killed them and brought them back. So then they were born as uh, two two brothers, Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha. Hiranyaksha was a devotee of Lord Brahma. So then Lord Brahma, he was happy and he gave him a boon. In that boon, it said, no animal or beast, human or God, can kill him. So then uh, in that, uh, he started torturing the people of earth and uh, harassing the devatas. Then he uh, put uh, earth, Mahabhumi, into the Patal Loka and submerged it in the ocean. So then, um, also he had invaded Devaloka. They, um, there were two people ruling the earth at that time so then um, i forgot the names yeah they they were ruling the earth their husband and wife so uh, they um, they were asking L lord brahma what to do because uh, their only home earth is submerged so then Lord Brahma thought to do something and he started meditating to Lord Vishnu. Then he realized uh, that a small boar came out of his nostrils and uh, it began to grow and grow. Then he realized that was Lord Vishnu in his Varaha Avatara. So then, yes. Yeah, as so the people who were, yeah, Manu and his wife Shatarupa were ruling over earth. Seeing this, Manu and his wife came to Lord Brahma and bowed and said, Father, tell us how many ways serve you and ensure the happiness in this world and the next. Where should uh, Shatarupa and I live as Mother Earth is submerged in the ocean? Lord Brahma became worried and started meditating. Then a small boar came out of Brahma's nostrils. Wondering what that creature was, it grew and grew till it was the size of a large mountain. It was Lord Vishnu and he said, I will enter into the ocean to lift Mother Earth out of it. 
he took the form of a boar to kill Hiranyaksha because while getting the boon, among all the animals, Hiranyaksha forgot to mention boar as an animal. So then, yeah. Emitting a terrifying roar, Lord Vishnu uh, took one mighty leap into the air, tore the clouds with his hooves and dived into the bed of the ocean in search of Mother Earth. He reached the other end of the ocean and discovered in its depths Bhumi Devi. Meanwhile, Hiranyaksha rushed to the seashore where he encountered Varuna, Lord of the Ocean, and challenged him. O Supreme, O Supreme Lord, O Guardian of the whole sphere, come and have battle with me. Varna became very angry because he knew at this moment Hiranyaksha was mightier than him. So he curbed his anger and said, I am too old to fight. Only Vishnu is an equal opponent. Go, see, go seek him out. Suddenly Narada arrived there. Hiranyaksha asked him, do you know the whereabouts of Vishnu? Narada answered, uh, Vishnu is in the ocean, rescuing Mother Earth. Angry Hiranyaksha charged towards, towards the ocean bed. Meanwhile, the boar had dug his tusk into the ocean bed and lifted Mother Earth onto it. It began rising to the surface. Hiranyaksha rushed to him with a mace in his hand, saying, You fraudulent fellow, why, where are you carrying away the earth conquered by me? Stop or I'll crush your head with this maze. Hiranyaksha challenged Lord Vishnu in a form in the form of boar to have battle with him. But Vishnu ignored all his warnings and continued rising to the surface. Seeing this, Hiranyaksha gave a chase, but the boar did not the boar didn't even look back. Hiranyaksha said, Wait. I know you can defeat me with all your magic power, but at present you are near me and I'll show, surely defeat you. The boar escaped to put Mother Earth at a safe place. To this, Hiranyaksha became very angry and shouted, How can you run away like that, a coward? Return, my, return me my earth. The earth was already frightened, seeing Hiranyaksha. It began to tremble more. Lord Vishnu in Varahavatara brought earth over the surface of the ocean and placed it gently on its axis and blessed. Then turned to face Hiranyaksha. The demon threw his mace at the bow, but the bow stepped aside and raised his mace. They fought for a long time with their mace. Now Brahma warned Vishnu, you only have an hour before the sunset. Destroy the demon before... It's dark, so that he gets no opportunity to resort his black ma magic. Hearing Brahma's words, Hiranyaksha hurled his mace towards Lord Vishnu, but later flung it away. Having lost the mace, Hiranyaksha began hitting out with his face on the chest of the boat. Lord Vishnu in Varahavatara hit Hiranyaksha hard on his face and with his fist and tossed him in the air. He fell over his head and died on the spot. Manu got his earths back and the gods got back their heaven. In this way, Lord Vishnu and in Varahavatara slayed Hiranyaksha and saved Mother Earth from harm. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. And I will request you are, you can speak but without the words. You can put pictures in the next presentation. That gives a better um, you know, a picture speaks more louder than words in when you when you read here like that. Okay, sir. Okay, Thank all you. of you, all children are doing very well. Just that you put some pictures so that small children will enjoy it. Okay, very nice, very nice story. Only and see the Varaha Avatara first slide. That's it. You want to see the Varaha Avatara first slide? We can only see that slide. We cannot see the other slides. Oh, why it is happening like that? Wait a minute. I'll stop this and again screen share. Sir, I think uh, while sending, it got jumbled. That's it. Now you can see my screen? Now we can see. Sir, now now it is moving? 
it is moving now yes okay so it was an excellent presentation sharo thank you so much and we will move to what happened uh, sir yeah sir can i uh, present the dakineshwar temple next next week as uh, next week i am having my exams that's why sure sure you present okay i'll do it next to next week yes yes please so today we have nayana can you see the slide i am again it is paused so stop screen share why it is getting paused is someone playing with the i have made some people co host i am not talking okay now can you see can you see the slide mahi and aditi yes, are co host okay okay no problem can you see the slide please yes sir yes sir and if i move are you able to see it now i have moved it no no i am moving it no not no sir okay what should i do now wait a minute i will just stop all my things no yes. suggestion sir so when you are screen sharing so you uh, when you when gives you an option for which screen to select you might want to sell um, so you might want to uh, go to the slide show mode first and then okay. select that slide show mode when you are uh, in that uh, selection mode okay so now i have done slide show so uh, now, now you should before you start screen sharing you should go into the slide show mode and after that when you're uh, in zoom when you're selecting which screen to uh, share you should you should select the now, slide show screen now see if it is happening so you have to sh stop sharing first i have okay i'll stop share then i will so now you have to go to uh, share uh, now you have to go to powerpoint and yes. go into slide show mode yeah can so you see the screen no sir so first you have to go to powerpoint without sharing and go into slide show mode <coughs> yes sir yes sir we can see yes sir but you cannot see the movement no so we can no we can see we can see okay, the movement okay okay nayana then good we will we will not now remove that slide show good nayana you are worse but as we have decided rama madam will chant and explain uh, how to chant and then we will explain the verse okay ma'am yes, you are sir. there yes yes okay hari om hari om shri guru devo namaha uh, nayana are you ready let me chant first and then i will uh, you can repeat after me okay okay ma'am maya tatam idam sarvam jagadavya जगदव्यक्तमूर्ति महाप्राणाइन वेरी गुड मैया 
जगदव्यक्तमूर्तिना जगदव्यक्तमूर्तिना मत्स्थानि सर्वभूतानि मत्स्थानि सर्वभूतानि अगेन मत्स्थानि इज शॉर्ट वोवल यू नो एंडिंग मत्स्थानि सर्वभूतानि मत्स्थानि सर्वभूतानि नचाहम तेश्वावस्थिता नचाहम तेश्वावस्थिता Can you chant the whole shloka once? Yes, ma'am. Maya tatam idam sarvam jagat avyakta murtina matthani sarva bhutani nacaham teshva vasthita ha. Again, there are two mistakes. Matthani, don't elongate. Sarva bhutani also, don't elongate. And you know, while chanting tatam idam, it will take little longer time. Jagat avyakta murtina. You don't have to only while understanding the meaning you have to split. Otherwise, continuously you can chant. Okay. 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 Go ahead. So in this verse, Bhagwan Sri Krishna tells us that I uh, don't search for uh, a. me in every being because every being in the whole universe is within me thank you very nice so the closest example of this is space see space is there everywhere in that we have the multiple planets together they become one solar system and multiple solar system isn't it so you can't say that space is no away and solar system is away so that's what the closest example of this bhagwan swarupa that sarvagata that is that is the word used for everywhere god is there sarvagata he is everywhere his space is the closest example and as we can't see the space it is there within us also isn't it if you go through the nose or mouth space only is there and if you don't use your brain what is there in this only empty space isn't it so if you use your brain then the space is less in this so lord is formless he doesn't have any form just like space is formless he is all pervading as space and lord is supporting if you take out the gravitational force from the space what will happen to the planet it will just move here and there meteorites will come and hit the uh, different actually it's not about meteorites sir you take okay. gravity from mm. one place in the like galaxy then uh, from our galaxy only it will cr crash into other galaxies mm. making more mayhem making more mayhem making more mayhem okay so there is some support to all this and that is god bhagwan so that is the meaning of the 9.4th verse from 9.4 to 9.10 this six verses seven verses will tell about ishwara okay again we have seen in which chapter about ishwara the entire chapter is about him yeah someone vibhuti yoga 10th chapter yeah okay so oh, i know, but then i was doubtful was it was uh, it is it properly is it so proper this six seven verses will tell about ishwara so what is the ishwara whether it is form formless whether you can touch that so it is about the higher part of the ishwara the lower part or the maya which is shown is a form krishna rama all these are form but the real adhara is like space we cannot see but it is everywhere now we'll go to the 9.5 verse vishnu we we'll learn the chanting from ma'am one request is madam once you teach the end end we will all want to chant with you in the end okay. 
नूतानी पश्य मे योग मैश्वर भूत भुन्न च भूतस्थो ममात्मा भूत भावना विष्णु शल विल ट्रांसलिटेटेड वन बी हेच अंडरलाइन ओके यू कैन सी द्लाइड ओके न मत्स्थानी भूतानी न मत्स्थानी भूतानी पश्य मे योग मैश्वर पश्य मे योग मैश्वर भूत भृन्न च भूत भृन्न च Don't say bhuta. Ye there is no bar upon ye, isn't it? Bhuta. It is short vowel. Bhuta bhrunna cha. Bhuta bhrunna cha. Don't say bhuta. It is bhuta bhrunna cha. Bhuta bhrunna cha. Bhuta sto. Bhuta sto. भूत भृन्न च भूतस्थ भूत भृन्न च भूतस्थ ममात्मा भूत भावना ममात्मा भूत भावना वेरी गुड यू कैन चैंट योर सेल्फ या चामत्स्थानी भूतानी पश्य मे योग मैश्वर भूत भृन्न च भूतस्थो मत्म भूत भावन इज इट मत्मा मम ए देर इज अ फस्ट एम यू हेव द लॉन्ग वोवेल नो इट इज शॉर्ट मत्मा मत्मा Very good. Okay. Ma'am, the all of us will chant yeah. together. Yeah. Yes. Nacha matthani bhutani. Nacha matthani bhutani. Bhutani. Pasya me yoga mai swaram. Pasya me yoga mai swaram. भूत भृन्न च भूतस्थो देर आर फोर महाप्राण भूतस्थो भूत भावना ओके ओके विष्णु गो हेड विद योर एक्सप्लेनेशन ना नेवर चा एंड मत्स्तनी अबाइड इन मी भूतानी ऑल लिविंग बीइंग्स पश्य बिहोल्ड मे माय योगम ईश्वरम डिवाइन एनर्जी भूत भृत सस्टेनर ऑफ ऑल लिविंग बीइंग्स ना नेवर चा येट भूतस्त ड्वेलिंग ए ड्वेलिंग इन Mama, my, Atma, self, Bhuta, Bhavanaha, Creator of all living beings. And yet the living beings do not abide in me. Behold the mystery of my divine energy. Although my, I am the Creator and the Sustainer of all living beings, I am not influenced by them or by material nature. Beyond the two energy, He see my Shakti. 
and Jiva Shakti mentioned in the previous verse, there is a third energy of God. This is called Yoga Maya Shakti, to which the Lord refers as divine energy in this verse. Yoga Maya is a God's all-powerful energy, which can make the impossible possible and is responsible for many of the amazing things that we contribute attribute to his personality. For example, God is seated in our hearts, yet we have no perception of him. This is because his divine Yogamaya power keeps his keeps us aloof from him. Similarly, God's God also keeps us himself aloof from the influence of Maya. Maya feels embarrassed to even stand before God. Isn't it a wonder that although God pervades Maya, the material energy, yet he is aloof from it? This is again by the mysterious power of Yoga Maya. If the world would influence God, then when it decays or is destroyed, his nature and personal liberty will also deteriorate. But despite all the modifications in the world, God remains established in his personality. He is in the world and yet untouched by it. Thank you. Excellent. Excellent. So, I hope you are seeing my screen. Okay. So, can you see the screen? I have moved it to the next slide. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. You can see a projector. Correct. So what God is telling here, like in the first, last verse, he explained, I am everywhere. I'm in everyone, right? So, but here he's telling opposite. I am away from everyone. So what he wants to tell as very clearly Vishnu says, the Maya Shakti of Brahman is in every one of you. But Brahman himself, like this movie projector is projecting on the screen. Whatever happens in the movie, whether there is a bloodshed, whether there is someone um, jumping from some cliff or there is a car, car driving very fast, someone getting his boot into mud, will the screen get affected? No, sir. No. Same way. It's a projection. It's just an yes. image. Exactly. It's a projection, imagination. It's an imagery world. Same way, children difficult to understand but brahman has two aspect it's the original brahman which is the adhara of everything and the projected image which is the maya shakti which from the kinetic energy sorry potential energy of brahman it becomes kinetic energy so that energy is we all and we think this is the real world but brahman himself doesn't get affected what you do in the real world because Tomorrow, if someone says, I am Brahman and I can go and bully any kid. So I am not doing anything. Brahman is doing everything. You can't say that. Isn't it children? The yoga Maya is in you, but the Brahman is not you. Exactly. But because of Brahman only, yoga Maya is there. Dad, there is even a story about it. What, what is the story? Oh, so basically, Sir, it's it's like, like one visual perception is within you They're like but a real god is not within you like this once a farmer had by mistake he had the cow so he told it was indra's fault because he controlled his hands it's like that okay so i hope it will be understood very very well in future one verse a few verses so understand that whatever maya is there that is what is this maya jagat we say like your dream. In a dream, that will come in the next verse. I don't want to tell it now. We will just go to the sixth verse, children, by Anjana. Anjana. Yeah. yeah. Nityam. There are two Mahapranas. Stha and again Yatha Kasha. So there are two places you have Mahaprana. Please repeat. Yatha Kasha Stito Nityam. 
See, there's Chito, oh, Mahaprana. You know, these are underlined, isn't it? Yatha Kasha Chito Nityam. Yatha Kasha Chito Nityam. Vayu Sarvatra Go Mahan. Vayu Sarvatra Go Mahan. There, Vayuhu is there, that is Visarga, two dots. Okay, Anjana. Then in front of that, you are Sakara. That means Vayus. Okay. Vayus Sarvatra Go Mahan. Vayus Sarvatra Go Mahan. Tatha Sarvani Bhutani. Tathasarvani Bhutani Matsthani Tupadharaya Matsthani There is Yenai, there is a long vowel, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Matsthani Tupadharaya Matsthanityupadharaya. Dha is Mahapran. Dharaya. Dharaya. Okay. okay. You can repeat the whole sloka. Chant again. Yes, ma'am. Yatha kasasthito nityam vayuhu sarvatra gomahan tatha sarvani bhutani there, Vayuhu Sarvatra. No, it, you should say Vayus Sarvatra. Vayus Sarvatra Go Mahan. Vayus Sarvatra Go Mahan. Okay. Correct. Let us all chant together. Yatha Kasha Sthito Nit. Yam Yatavani that Bhutani is Mahaprana. Bhutani. Bhutani. Matsthani Tupadharaya. Matsthani Tupadharaya. Okay. Anjana, go ahead with your explanation. Yes, Uncle. Meaning of this verse. Just as the great, all pervading wind is ever present in space, in the same manner all beings are in me. Thus you understand. So in this verse, Krishna introduces the fifth feature of the Lord or Brahman and the fifth feature introduced here is Asangatva. In the previous verse, Krishna has said that the Lord is associated with the universe and the universe is upon the Lord. Whatever defects are there in the world, it may affect the Lord. The nature is called as Asangatvam. And what is the example? Krishna gives the example of Akasha. It is a beautiful example. Akasha or space is the nearest example of Brahman. Hari Om. Thank you, Sachin Uncle, for giving this opportunity. Thank you, Anjana. Excellently, you acted uh, and you presented very well. So, uh, you. one more thing. Yes. Space, it has two more features of the Bhagavan. A great, great example. One, you don't know what is there beyond and even beyond. We use a web telescope. We can only see limited. But space as far as we all know, is unlimited. So, one more thing is, um, since it's unlimited, now see, the sky is blue, everything is uh, like, the stars are different colors and all, 
the suns are different colors the planets are different colors but that does not affect uh, the space it always will stay black correct absolutely right uh, sharav so here now uh, what he is adding the wind part of it like you know when the entire shrishti started it is with space first okay there are five elements you all know about the gross elements the first is space what comes after that fire air air, air. then air the, then love. the fire then sir water yeah. jala then water and then prithvi prithvi correct so space uh, air fire water and earth this are so he is adding one more element that is wind what is telling that the great all pervading wind is present in the vast empty space even that doesn't get sullied it is not getting to get affected with whatever happens like a wind can carry perfume it can carry any other smell but it doesn't get affected by it isn't it that's what is this is a repeat verse from the fourth verse so this is also related to the asangatvam part of brahman as already is explained by sharav and anjana very well god cannot be quantified for any or objectified by any instrument which we have what are the five instruments we have children in our body sir the five organs correct what are they can you tell us vishnu uh, uh, sir here sir knows sir knows uh, ears eyes he tongue 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 tongue, tongue and skin doctor can i tell it in sanskrit please tell go ahead acha ganda sparsha and shabda rupa shabda rupa rasa ganda yeah shabda rupa sparsha rasa ganda this is how it is okay order is in that order okay very good very good Sir, all of you six senses knowledge very nice i wanted someone to tell that and that six sense you get from where uh yoga meditation dharma guru okay. yes scriptures By scriptures very good who answered that adit very good very good very nice ishita also answered it i think so god is everywhere and it all the things around and within you also god is not sullied by the external forces that we all understood by this verse so we will move on to i think today's last verse or ma'am we can we take this verse next class because it's only 9 yes. 14 we may not complete yes. this verse yes so children yes, yes. i will we'll take our... yeah i will give it hand it over to uh, our uh, aditi for summarizing this class aditi over to you uh, one second aditi yeah, yeah. hari om in uh, today's class we learned ambika ma'am taught us the uh, uh, when gokulashtami falls or um, janmashtami and the other name for it which is uh, janmashtami and uh, the lessons we learn from bhagavad gita those are to follow our swadharma stay calm be uh, uh, perspectful and uh, many more and then we learn the uh, significance of ninth chapter so krama mukti um, is that you are studying and uh, did not attain moksha and shradhyo mukti is uh, you have attained moksha in this janma and then we recall uh, one to three verses next um, sharav explained the varaha avatara so um, beautifully thank you and next uh nayana did 4.4 we learned how to chant it properly and then uh 
meaning because of light uh, we all are seeing everything but light is not a part of the object just like that god is there in everything but not affected by it in the fifth verse vishnu uh, told that um uh, um krishna says the being the beings are not in me see my divine yoga i myself am the creator of the beings and the sustainer of the beings but i am not in the beings in sixth verse anjana uh, told that all pervading wind is present in space just like that everything is me uh, this is similar to verse 4 uh, happy uh, janmashtami everyone hari om thank you thank you so much can you and chant I your verse chant yeah can i shiva shiva so, like, she is chanting some other verse and i would like to end today's session with yatra yogeshwaro krishna which is the last um, verse of bhagavad gita uh, said by sanjaya यत्र योगेश्वरो कृष्णो यत्र पार्थो धनुर्धन तत्र श्री विजया भूति ध्रुवाही तेर्म तेर्म पूर्ण मद पूर्ण पूर्ण मुदच्यते पूर्ण से पूर्ण मदाय पूर्णमेवशिष्यते प्रणाम्स टू मैडम रमा मैडम थैंक यू सो मच इट वॉज वंडरफुल द वे चिल्ड्रन चैंटिंग इट्स ऑल वंडरफुल थैंक यू मैडम थैंक यू